Hi, my name is Jeffeth and I'm a trainer at T-Square Lab. Today, I will be sharing on the topic of nutrition titled Food Fundamentals. The scope of this discussion will be on the importance of a balanced diet and factors which influence our control on eating. Before we talk about a balanced diet, it is necessary to understand our body's food requirements for survival. Our body requires energy to function normally and energy comes from our food that is used in building materials for growth of cell and body tissue, essential maintenance or homeostasis for short to maintain optimal conditions for cell functions, and metabolic processes which refers to a chemical reaction in the body that changes food into energy. In simpler terms, energy is fuel or resource of the body just as electricity is used to power a Tesla car and petroleum is used to fuel a petrol car. So now, what does the body need? The body needs essential nutrients which includes carbohydrates, proteins and fats, vitamins, minerals and water to survive. These nutrients can be grouped in two main categories called macronutrients which refers to the body's need for nutrients in larger amounts and micronutrients which refers to the body's need for nutrients in smaller amounts. If you take a look at the first image, proportions of macronutrients are divided into three parts. The proportion of macronutrients will differ between individuals. However, generally speaking, a balanced diet will have sufficient proteins and moderate carbs and fats. The second image shows micronutrients which can be found in fruits and vegetables. Food supplements like magnesium and zinc are also beneficial to the body for an individual who regularly exercises. There are also non-essential nutrients called phytochemicals which are able to be found in vegetables and fruits as well as fatty acids in fish. Probiotics in functional foods like yogurt and fermented food also provide health benefits beyond nutritional value and disease prevention. So now why does the body need a balanced diet? There are just two points that I want to bring across. One is on malnutrition and one is on metabolic syndrome. I like to call them the M&M &M to answer uh, the question on the need for the body to have a balanced diet. So first of all, malnutrition refers to a diet that does not contain the right amount of nutrients. For example, lack of carbs and protein can lead to major development and growth problems. And this condition is called Hwashiakor. Also, Deficiency in certain vitamins and minerals can cause specific illness. For example, a calcium deficiency is called rickets, so that's abnormal development of bones in the body. Scurvy, which is a vitamin C deficiency, causes bleeding in gums. And beriberi, which is also another vitamin deficiency of the vitamin B. Metabolic syndrome right, is the next point I want to make refers to a group of health conditions leading to increased risk in heart disease and related problems. So the group of conditions are obesity, which refers to high amounts of fat tissue in the body, hypertension, which refers to high blood pressure, diabetes, which refers to high blood glucose levels in the body, as well as dyslipidemia, which also refers to high cholesterol levels in the body. Now, the factors that influence a balanced diet refers to your hunger and appetite. Hunger is the physiological need for food, triggered by internal factors such as low blood sugar or an empty stomach. Other external factors that can trigger your hunger is the sight and smell of food. Now, appetite is the desire to eat, right? There are some negative triggers like short-term memory and stress which can create uh, a greater desire to eat and individual falling into the category of a metabolic syndrome which I mentioned previously. So, 
There are also substances that control our appetite. Okay, I'm going to list a few of them right now. Water stretches the stomach and it triggers satiety, meaning you feel fuller for a longer period of time and therefore you do not feel as hungry. Consuming of fiber slows emptying of the stomach and delays absorption of nutrients, which also creates a feeling of satiety in the body. Consuming of proteins affects the release of various appetite regulating hormones. And what that means is that it increases the feeling of fullness. So as I mentioned earlier, water, fiber, as well as protein, they help in create, giving you that sense of fullness. The next substance, grapefruit, create, it reduces activation of the vagus nerve, the nerve that connects from your brain to your digestive tract. And the scent of it, it reduces your appetite. So this is, um, this, this is another substance that has, uh, has such an effect on the body. Okay? And also, nicotine activates receptors in the hypothalamus in your brain, reducing hunger signals. Another element of food is its flavor. Flavor is a combination of the taste of food, right? There are five basic tastes, sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and umami that our mouth is able to identify, as well as smell, which are chemicals that travel through your nose. Combined with input from other senses, it produces a pleasurable experience. And maybe that's why when we eat food, we are happy. There are also non-taste sensations, which includes the touch and hearing that contributes to food texture. Color can also impact how we perceive flavor. Right, a study has shown that changing the color of orange squash affected people's ability to clearly identify its flavor. And the nerves on the tongue detect temperature, touch, and pain. For example, Food that activate these nerves produce a specific sensation. Like carbon dioxide in fizzy drinks does not activate the sour taste receptors, but it's the bubbles that causes touch receptors to fire, and this combination produces the fizzy sensation. Now, I mentioned a little about taste and smell, but now I want to share a, a bit more about it. Okay? How you taste food is when the molecules in food are dissolved in our saliva and it's being registered as a taste when they come into contact with your tongue. And how you smell food is when airborne volatile molecules released by food are detected by your nose as smell. Sensory information is passed to the brain which sends nerve signals to receptor cells in the nose or tongue. Our presentation will be concluding on the final topic on digesting of nutrients. So, food enters your mouth and is being chewed by your teeth, which breaks it down into smaller pieces. The next step is when the smaller pieces go down into your stomach, and then a mechanical movement uh, mixture of digestive juices, which is acidic liquid in the stomach, as well as enzymes, which are, uh, form a chemical reaction, and bowel produced by the liver for digesting fats further digest the food. So this mixture will be absorbed into our smaller intestine when it's mostly digested into uh, a mixture of liquid full of simple sugars, amino acids, fatty acids, and digested fiber which passes along the small intestine. Nutrients and water will be then absorbed into the bloodstream and whatever is remaining will go through the large intestine through a fermentation process and eventually be passed out as feces from the body. This brings us to the end of my sharing on food fundamentals. I hope you have enjoyed it and stay tuned for more. Thank you.